Hi, I'm Dr. Liz Lipsky, Director of Doctoral Studies at Hawthorne University and the author of Digestive Wellness. Our topic for today is irritable bowel syndrome, probably something not most people talk about, but we're going to. It affects 12% of the population at any one time, and the characteristics of irritable bowel syndrome include things like bloating, gas, incomplete bowel movements, constipation, diarrhea, and some people have all of it. Bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, and you think, well, you know, it doesn't sound so horrible. However, a study was done recently that compared the lifestyle and quality of life with people with different kinds of diseases, and they found that people with irritable bowel syndrome have the same quality of life as people undergoing chemotherapy for cancer. What you have to realize about the chemo is that it's short, it's short-lived, and um, but people with irritable bowel syndrome might have irritable bowel syndrome for their entire lives. Most of my clients with irritable bowel syndrome have find that if they have a lot of issues in the morning, that they can't make any appointments or schedule anything in the morning. I know people who've been late to go to work because they're having constipation problems or diarrhea on a regular basis. I have clients who are afraid to go out on dates because they're afraid of eating anything with other people, that they're gonna get gassy, bloated, maybe have diarrhea. So it really changes your social life quite a lot and it's a really big deal. Most people, in fact, 75% of people, live with irritable bowel syndrome. They don't tell their doctors about it. They don't try to do anything about it because if they've mentioned it to their doctors, mostly they're just told eat more fiber and don't worry about it. And that's not really a solution to the problem. Technically, it's called functional bowel disease, which means that it's just a problem with how your body functions, and it's not considered to be a serious health issue. However, as I'm telling you right now, for many people, it's really disruptive of their life and lifestyle and really changes their quality of life. So what does cause irritable bowel syndrome? Well, from my viewpoint, there are generally three or four different categories that I look at. 25% of irritable bowel syndrome is caused dramatically and directly by infection. So somebody might have a bacterial infection that's causing it, they might have a parasitic infection, or they might have a fungal infection like candidiasis. So one of the most important things is to actually do some testing to see does, do you have an infection that might be causing this discomfort, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation? And I generally use stool testing. It's very different than the type of stool testing that most physicians use because what they do is just a random ova and parasite, just looking to see what they can find. And I once asked the lab director of one of the stool labs, and I said, how come you find things when none of the regular hospital labs find anything? And he said, well, there's a few things. One, we really train our technicians well to look. Two, we have state-of-the-art equipment. And three, pe these people do this all day long. It's all they're looking for is parasites and bacterial infections. And they really know what they're looking for, and they spend a great deal of time. Whereas at a regular lab, they might get very few of these coming in even in a week. So um, anyway, you should go to one of the holistic labs and do a really good stool analysis. Also, there's a, a, a breath test that can be done that looks for infection in the small intestine because that's hard to pick up from a stool test. And so often on a breath test, you can find that there's an infection. So these are things that once you find out, you can go to your local doctor, your regular doctor, and see what kind of treatment they might have to offer you, or you can do things herbally and naturally if you feel like doing that. Another common cause of irritable bowel syndrome is lactose intolerance. 70% of the world population is lactose intolerant. And if you're of Asian descent, if African descent, Jewish, or Mediterranean descent, probably you're lactose intolerant. And lactose intolerance can cause all of the symptoms of IBS. 
Again, there's a simple test that you can use to find out if you're lactose intolerant. And again, it's a breath test where you actually drink a little bit of milk or a, a liquid that has lactose in it, which is milk sugar. And then you breathe and into the containers that you breathe in, they can see if you're producing a lot of methane gas, then you're probably lactose intolerant. And this is a test that can be done through one of the stool labs, but is also more and more widely available through regular physicians. There's another way that you can find out if you're lactose intolerant, and that would be simply to stop eating anything that has dairy products in it for two to three weeks and see if your irritable bowel syndrome goes away. And that's generally what I recommend to my clients as a first line. Just try it and see how you do. The next cause of, of irritable bowel syndrome is food sensitivities, and we have a whole video podcast just on food sensitivities and the elimination diet. So I recommend that you listen to that. But the most common food sensitivities that irritate the bowel are either dairy products or grains. And so by going on an Atkins-type diet for a couple of weeks, which would be mostly proteins and vegetables, you can find out also if maybe you have a food sensitivity by just eating fish and chicken and maybe some rice and vegetables and just see how that goes and see if your irritable bowel goes away. And I found so often that that will do the trick. It's kind of amazing. The final cause of irritable bowel syndrome is stress. There are more nerve endings in the gut than there are in our spine. And we make more neurotransmitters in our gut than we do in our brain or in our, anywhere else in our body. For example, serotonin, which we normally think of as being associated with depression and drugs that we use for, as antidepressants called SSRIs, it happens to be also produced in the gut. In fact, 95% of serotonin is made in our intestines. And what it's used for there is to stimulate gut motility. So if we don't have enough serotonin, we become really constipated. And if we have an overabundance of serotonin, we can have diarrhea. So looking at the stress in your life and how you deal with stress and how you cope and doing behavior modification therapies or maybe doing biofeedback can be very useful. Acupuncture also can be very useful for irritable bowel syndrome. Some of the things that I look at when I'm working with a client, if we run through all of these possibilities and uh, some augmentive ideas that I might add would be adding probiotic supplements. So for example, somebody who has diarrhea type irritable bowel syndrome, I would recommend a product called Floristore, which is a probiotic called Saccharomyces boulardii that's made by a French pharmaceutical company that is very specific to diarrhea. They have 50 years of research on using this product for people with diarrhea from all causes. I also recommend probiotics for people who have constipation type irritable bowel syndrome, but I would use a general more mixed type of probiotic that has acidophilus and different types of bifidobacteria in it. And maybe some Lactobacillus plantarum, which is very soothing to the gut and very relaxing to the gut. Also, if somebody has constipation type irritable bowel syndrome, I'll probably recommend extra amounts of magnesium, either citrate or glycinate, or another really good absorbable form of a magnesium chelate, because constipation is often a signal that somebody doesn't have enough magnesium. And somewhere between 50 and 75% of us don't have enough magnesium. So generally with clients, I'll have them increase their magnesium level until they get the kind of stool consistency that they would like. Also, fiber is a good supplement for people, but I like to have people eat more fiber in their food. There are just some quick ideas if you have irritable bowel syndrome. You can find more about IBS in my book, Digestive Wellness, or my other book, Digestive Wellness for Children. And I hope you've learned something from this podcast. And until next time, be well.